Are you or someone you know and love at higher risk for having a stroke despite being on a blood thinner or atrial fibrillation without you even knowing? While some medications are better absorbed when taken with food, does it matter what kind of food or when you eat it? Hello again, this is Herb, the heart pharmacist, and on this channel, I go over practical tips on the use of heart medications so you can choose and use wisely. The blood thinner Xeralto or Rivaroxaban is a medication that needs to be taken with food for enhanced absorption for adequate stroke prevention. However, if you take a careful look at the product monograph dosing for atrial fibrillation, you'll see that they actually specify that it's supposed to be taken with an evening meal. Why do you think that is? Is it because we just assume that people generally eat larger meals for supper? Or is there something else to it? There was a lot of discussion about this phenomenon of circadian endogenous coagulation rhythm back in the 1980s and 90s that seemed to have sort of fallen by the wayside over the last couple of decades. But there's something in our blood that's called the plasminogen activator inhibitor 1, also known as serpine E1, that sort of oscillates throughout the day and peaks around 6 in the morning. What this PI1 is, is a protein that blocks the body's ability to break down blood clots. So higher levels of this may increase the risk for clot formation. It's been well documented that between the hours of 6 a.m. and noon, people are at about a 40% higher risk of having a heart attack and the risk of stroke was increased increased by 54% compared to the rest of the day. Historically and biologically, the thought behind why this exists in the hunter-gatherer times, when humans had to venture out in search for food, when trying to fend off predators in the waking hours, which was a dangerous time, and having this internal mechanism to be able to form clots from wounds faster could have been useful. As for many thousands of years later, when waking up isn't as much of a threat as it used to be for our ancestors, although some of you may disagree with us, it's questionable why this mechanism still takes place. Here's a study that was published in 2016 in the Journal of Thrombosis and Hemostasis that compared the effects of rivaroxaban in the morning versus evening in healthy individuals. The results of this trial revealed that when participants took rivaroxaban in the evening, they exhibited higher levels of the drug and more significant inhibition of factor 10A, its primary mechanism. This effect was primarily noticeable during the first 12 hours after the evening meal compared to morning administration. Taking rivaroxaban in the evening also appeared to better suppress the formation of thrombin, substance involved in blood clotting during the morning hours. This is crucial because the human body's natural clotting and clot dissolving processes follow a daily rhythm, which can impact the risk of blood clot related events. We don't really know why there are these time dependent effects, but it could be related to biological variations in enzyme activity or the way the drug is metabolized in the body. Enzyme activity, particularly certain cytochrome enzymes, are responsible for metabolizing drugs and they can fluctuate throughout the day. For instance, some enzymes have higher activity in the morning, potentially affecting the drug's availability and concentration. The findings have implications for the timing of rivaroxaban administration, especially considering that it's one of the few anticoagulants that's approved for once a day dosing. While the concept of taking daily medications in the morning is common, this trial suggests that evening administration of rivaroxaban might be more beneficial for certain individuals. And by taking the drug in the evening, its anticoagulant effects could be maximized during the morning hours when the risk of thrombotic events is higher due to the body's natural clotting rhythm. And by taking it in the evening, it could lead to maybe reduced bleeding events when the drug peaks during the night, when the risk of accidents and injuries are generally lower when people are asleep. That's unless they are getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or like me when I go for a snack sometimes. The next question for me then becomes, well, whether the morning rise in high one levels is primarily driven by the body's internal circadian rhythm, or is it influenced by daily changes in behavior and the environment and the things we do? To investigate this, researchers have conducted a two-week experiment, and during the experiment, the participants went through different phases. At first, 
they went through two days in a regular room environment with normal lighting. For the subsequent 12 days, they entered a controlled phase. And in this phase, the researchers managed everything about the participants' daily routines, from their activities and sleep patterns to their meals and exposure to light. During the experiment, the participants were asked to do certain tasks like tilting their heads and cycling at specific paces. The researchers then took blood samples and measured the levels of Pi-1. And what they found was that the levels of Pi-1 in the blood changed throughout the day, but they were highest around 6.30 in the morning and lowest around 3.30 in the afternoon. This change seemed to be mainly influenced by our body's internal clock rather than the activities participants were doing. Where this becomes even more complicated is that this circadian rhythm coagulation thing is that plots can vary from person to person and people have looked into comparing whether there are differences between normal healthy individuals compared to those with cardiovascular disease. And interestingly, this one systematic review published in 2021 in thrombosis research concluded that circadian rhythms of fibrinolysis may be less pronounced in those with heart disease compared to healthy individuals. But you really have to take this with a grain of salt because this systematic review, they didn't have data on things like uh, what medications the patient's on, which could have huge implications. So the idea behind it is that when you take rivaroxaban in the evening, you not only help increase the absorption, but the period in which the rivaroxaban levels are high enough to help prevent clot formation that somewhat matches the increase in the levels of Pi-1 when the risk of stroke may be the highest. My opinion about this is that it's not a very safe approach to rely on the general public to understand these sort of nuanced details. And just because you're taking rivaroxaban properly at supper time, not everybody's peak Pi-1 falls into that usual time frame. Wouldn't you want to be better protected over 24 hours? compared to a drug that has a very short half-life that could possibly lead to insufficient blood thinning. On the flip side, a paper published in the Journal of Clinical Pharmacology back in 2017 that was interestingly funded by Janssen studied whether meal timing and meal content could affect the pharmacokinetic parameters of rivaroxaban. They used data from the Einstein DVT dose ranging phase two trial and rocket AF phase three study, as well as data from clinical pharmacological studies conducted in healthy volunteers and yielded estimated and simulated PK parameters and steady state exposures. And what they concluded is that it does not matter whether patients take rivaroxaban in the morning or in the evening, nor does the meal type affected in any way. This study does seem a little shady to me. It seemed very well intended to do a study like this, but I don't know if I would trust the conclusions based on simulated data, especially if the product monograph still tells people to take it once daily with supper. I have a theory. I suspect that Bayer and Janssen got lucky with Rocket AF in that they were able to demonstrate that Rivaroxaban wasn't worse than warfarin with a once a day pill. Of course, there was the issue of the faulty and recalled INR testing devices in Rocket AF. It was just an entire can of worms that I'm not going to open up on this video. But even if you see past that, anecdotally, I suspect that they're getting away with over anticoagulating patients unnecessarily for stroke prevention, but under anticoagulating patients towards the end of the 24 hour dosing interval for the sake of marketing it as a once a day medication. This is probably the only advantage it has over apixaban. This is probably why the real world data is now telling us that people are bleeding more on rivaroxaban, but also having more breakthrough strokes and hemorrhagic conversions on rivaroxaban than say apixaban. This is precisely the reason why I'm against using something like rivaroxaban off-label for things like LV thrombus even. Why else is rivaroxaban dosed twice a day for other conditions like secondary prevention for CAD or PEs and DVTs for like the first three weeks? The pharmacokinetics of rivaroxaban is just too unreliable for adequate blood thinning. That's also safe in my opinion. In conclusion, my preference for DOAC for atrial fibrillation stroke prevention is not rivaroxaban, 
But if you are wanting to take Rivaroxaban once a day because of pill burden and you can reliably take it with supper, then sure. If you can't reliably take it with supper, then maybe something like Edoxaban could be preferred provided that your kidney function isn't too good for it and you don't mind shelling out about $3 per day without any insurance coverage. Now, whether you're a patient, caregiver, a medical professional in training or in practice, if you like this video, please consider giving it a big thumbs up to show that you like videos like these. And I'll continue trying to do my part in diving deeper into these heart drug related matters so you don't have to. Since my last video, I've had about another 10 subscribers. So this is absolutely amazing. And I'm grateful that you've tuned in and I hope that you learned something new. Thank you all for watching and remember to say no to drugs.